I'm here after a arduous backpacking tour uh, with a little more vegetation than I would have liked. Um, you know, things grow when they shouldn't, but, you know, that's okay. Uh, the point is, is that I'm here to uh, kind of wrap things up. I began the backpacking journey as a way to find a solution to a grant that I began to work on. Uh, the grant was released in 2019, I believe. And it was released by the military. And the military was asking, how do we solve rape in the military? And I thought, my first thought was, that doesn't even make any sense. Why would there be rape in the military? Uh, or sex, you know, that, why would that be, why would there be sexual assault in the military? And so I sat down at Starbucks every day, was trying to, you know, figure out the outline or the presentation or the, I guess the, uh, the, what do you call? The experiment, I guess. Yeah, the experiment. To be able to find that solution. And I grew up, or I graduated from a military, from a predominantly military school. And I remember going and visiting my girlfriend, or my friend, I guess. Uh, and then having to go through these checkpoints or through these bases. And I thought that was pretty cool because I felt like she was protected. I felt like I was getting scanned and everything. And so I was sitting down, I was working on that grant. I was thinking along those lines. I was thinking, well, honestly, you really have to lock everything down. You have to lock everything down, uh, you know, put everything into sections uh, and, uh, what do you call it? Um, zone, or, you know, quadrants and things like that. So that you are never, you know, you're always going through each area in each zone and never losing contact with, like, very, very close contact with that particular uh, surveillance system. Uh, that to me was the only solution. So I was thinking, well, nobody's gonna really, that's, that's no one's gonna really wanna go for that. Um, but that's really the only thing I could think of. And then I kind of was still working on trying to figure out more of the details to that. And then the grant was re-released later that year by the CDC. The CDC sent the exact same grant verbatim. Uh, and then I was, then I decided to jump back onto the grant and say, okay, let me try to tackle this again. And uh, then right after that, I think I was at University of Hawaii and I was working on a political campaign, uh, getting signatures for a political party to be processed through the system. And this didn't really, you know, I was getting paid, I was getting uh, supported for that, and I didn't really do anything. I just kind of sat there and supervised, um, making sure the documents were, you know, weren't getting stolen or whatever. Uh -huh. So then, right after that, I remember sitting at the university, and that's pretty much when COVID happened. And I was my first thought was, "Oh my God, that's exactly what I was, what I was thinking." You have to lock everything down. You have to quarantine everything. But I would have never thought to do it in that way. And that's really what's brilliant is because there are all sorts. You know, I have a background in biochemistry, and um, and genomics and so in my work with pathology it's pretty common sense and, and also well it's pretty common sense in the, the number or the multitude or the magnitude 
or the, yeah, I guess the multitude of the different uh, bacteria and the different viruses or even the, the illnesses that they create. Uh, there's so many different ways to create those illnesses and we may be able, we, we can um, take samples and try to figure out what exactly it is to find out what sort of antibiotic or what sort of antiviral to use. But essentially, we can just look at the symptoms and we can also just look at the classes uh, to be able to know what to be able to administer. So it doesn't really matter to be able to identify one flu over another flu or even, you know. So this idea of what COVID is, uh, it's pretty cool because, I mean, you can sit in a lab and work with the HPV virus, which is a great model organism and be able to kind of create your own um, your own virus to be able to do all sorts of things. And uh, you can use viruses for cancer, uh, to combat cancer and different things like that as a targeting technique, as a, a nucleotide specific uh, targeting technique. Um, and then also to be able to offset uh, ecosystems within the human system uh, using just, you know, uh, a tiny little machine or a tiny little life form. And so uh, I thought COVID was quite brilliant because, you know, it doesn't really matter if you identify, you know, something infectious uh, or if something even is created. Uh, we are always at the mercy of microorganisms and there's nothing that will ever stop microorganisms. And uh, it really just comes down to our own conscious efforts uh, not just hygiene, not just sanitation, that's a big part of it, uh, but it really comes down to, you know, what exactly is facilitating those phenomena. Why do some people get sick more so than others? And we look at the data, we look at the people, and we know exactly why. And so a lot of that common sense um, is a great way to be able to just say, you know, a lot of things we can't help as far as maybe we catch a cold or something, but there are a lot of things we can help, especially when it comes to the transfer of infectious diseases. And uh, looking at the grant once again, uh, and the nature of the grant, we can look at the nature of man in a very similar way. If you spend, if in the nature of man, you're in low, 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 much more likely to spread disease and much more likely for those things to uh, grow unchecked and just like behaviors uh, such as those that aren't you know given that surveillance or aren't given and a lot of it comes down to if you don't want anybody to steal your stuff then don't show them that you have that those things uh, but at the same time I don't really come from that world you know as they say don't allow opportunity but I don't come from that world I come from well if you're that kind of person then just don't be and so that's what also a great solution to the uh, to the grant is is you know we can we're not we're, we're very intelligent I mean we can see each individual and be able to know are they even capable of some be of an action like that and looking at personality a lot of it's happy-go-lucky a lot of it is you know he's a great guy everyone loves him you know even though you know he, you know with his children or whatever. So um, a lot of those politics end up create, you know, allowing for this sort of, these problems to be problems. Um, and so here I am back and uh, back in Hawaii after the whole COVID thing kind of blew over uh, just to be able to um, not have to be quarantined with the two-week protocol again. So I have returned. And so the, the CDC portion of it relaxed, and then now I'm back in the original um, military where it began, and that's really what it comes down to is uh, it's the military is within us all. You know, we, we are grown by the country, and it is, you know, the not, mil, not it's not to be militant, but it's to be organized and it's to be clear and focused and um, 
no matter what, that is the root of citizenship. And so the citizenship of man is a military. And so that's what dif differentiates the countries between each other is how their citizens are grown. And uh, that's really what decides the sort of poverty or the sort of socioeconomic uh, prosperities or products or uh, norms that they perpetuate as far as family power or as far as uh, business power um, and then you know when we're talking about the nature of the grant um, the nature of that grant and the nature of even crime in general ends up being more deliberate than it is uh, mistakes and so uh, mistakes don't normally happen if we're looking at probabilities what is the probability of something may happen you look at a crowd of people, we can already know the probabilities of each individual for something to happen in that particular crowd or at that moment. And so when we're looking at uh, tourism or we're looking at people traveling all over the world, we're not just concerned about our own country, but we're concerned about the whole world so that when we do go traveling, you know, our kids don't go missing, our study abroad students, um, you know, don't go missing. Or, and, and basically just that when we travel, everything is is clear and focused and, and back in that in that again not really militant although it could be but back in that uh, in that seed of what is citizenship and so uh, when it comes to cordiality that's a big part of the military is just being cordial uh, and that's what really is a big uh, what do you call it it's a, it's a well it's a big layer in the backbone of the honor uh, of existing and so uh, and society as a whole construct appreciates that you know everyone walks around with you know being polite and everything is, is clean and that's really you know what is able to be sanitate you know allows for sanitation and no one spits in your food and things like that um, because that would not be uh, honorable and or that would not be cordial that would not be so we never go down to those depths and that's what's great about this country is that this country has no uh this country is the example for the world by its history and by the westernization that not just this country has as um contributed towards but you know, that this country is, is at the head of that westernization, but as a young head. And so you know, we can look at British, we can look at the Portuguese, or we can look at the Italian and the Spanish, all that westernization that occurred across the globe. The United States is right at the apex of that as far as what we see in the image and, and what, we, um, what we allow in our freedoms and and in our constitution and, and what that really means um, to us in our, you know, there's no, I believe there's no other country that's more patriotic than, the, than America. I mean, everyone's patriotic, but it's America. And so when we're looking at business and we're looking at, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it, orphans um, or, you know, third world countries and, and how the economy moves through those countries. We're never wanting to take advantage, and America has definitely failed that. Um, but at the same time, our failures yesterday don't prevent our success for tomorrow or for today. So uh, you know, I started with that grant, and I remember thinking, you know, that's all that is worth, that's all my life is worth, you know. It's not worth anything other than that, the solution for that. And so I'm back here uh, to uh, here at the Air Force Army uh, Mall sort of intersection to be able to kind of close that up and wrap that up uh, because we already have everything in place now that we have this quarantine and the CDC and that uh, everything is we, we, we really push the frontier in terms of what is citizenship uh, we we um, suspended habeas corpus 
So that wasn't really in practice uh, for the American citizens that, you know, that were non-Muslim. But uh, now that we have CDC, you know, bringing, pushing that frontier, uh, life is taken a little more seriously, but in that sense of, you have to, you don't have to be, but you know, that fearlessness with life is what even allows for us to be able to escape those socioeconomic uh, trends. And so if we're looking at bringing in migrant workers or we're looking at how people are moving around the world, uh, it's by our hand and only by our hand. And if it would be otherwise, then we would not have the solution to that grant.